In this quick lecture, we're going to talk about global pressure systems and global wind belts and how they all come together in one thing. So I'm going to create a very complex picture. We're going to add layer upon layer to help you understand it um, so that you can kind of construct what's going on globally with all of the things with air pressure and wind. Um, so how does it all come together? So I'm going to just start out by drawing our Earth. Whoa, that is not a great Earth. So let's try that again. <laughs> kind of like it got smushed on one side. Let's try again. Okay, so we have our Earth, and I'm going to put some belts around it. So our lines of latitude to keep track of everything. So we first, we have the equator, which is zero degrees. Then we're going to go third of the way up. This is 30 degrees north latitude. We have 60 degrees north latitude. And at the tippity top, we have 90 degrees north, or North Pole. Same thing happens in the Southern Hemisphere, but it's 30 degrees south latitude, 60 degrees south latitude, and 90 degrees south latitude. Okay, um, so when we start to think about this, I've got to maybe use some different colors to try to keep track of everything. As we know from incoming solar radiation, it tends to be concentrated around the equator. So we have warm air right at the equator, and that causes air to start to rise. Okay. Okay, so this is from warming here. Um, what this creates is a low pressure. Okay, that low pressure is our ITCZ, our intertropical convergence zone. Um, and this is also called the equatorial trough. Um, but this is a place where we have warm air. It's a low pressure. And air rises. Okay, as air rises, it's going to cool adiabatically, it condenses, and it leads to rainstorms. So at the equator, um, daily thunderstorms are pretty common, okay? So we get clouds and rain. As that air rises, we know it does cool, and then it's going to start to diverge until it's kind of moving along. As it diverges out, it cools even more, and it starts to get colder, denser, and it sinks. And it sinks above 30 degrees north latitude. And here we get the development of a high pressure. Okay. Okay. And then we know that our, our wind goes from high to low at the surface. Okay. At 60 degrees north latitude, we have another low pressure. So the air rises, it's going to diverge aloft, and then it sinks back at the poles. Okay, so we have a low, and then a high, and a high. I told you it's going to get complicated with each one of these things. Um, okay, so a couple things about these highs and the lows. Um, right uh, here at 30 degrees north and south latitude, these are our subtropical highs. Okay, um, they are places because that air is descending from above, it tends to be cloudless windless. These are often called our horse latitudes. And if you're trying to remember it, that the equator, they're also called the doldrums. Okay, these are two places where we don't see a lot of wind. And that's because of what's happening globally with these high pressure systems. So this is also a subtropical high. Okay, at 60 degrees north and south, these are our subpolar lows. Okay, and then we have our polar highs at the top. 
to keep it all kind of together. So at each one of these places, we see different things. We see rainfall kind of associated with our lows, so at the equator and at 60 degrees north and south latitude, and we see very dry air um, at the highs, so at 90 degrees and also at 30, 30 degrees north and south and also at the North Pole. All right, um, so what's happening in between these? Now that we kind of have this circular system, just to keep these in mind, if you're wondering, these are our Hadley cells. These are cells of the vertical circulation, okay? Uh, but now what's going on with our global wind belts? That tells us the global pressure systems, but what's happening with the winds? Okay, um, well the wind moves from high to low and we remember that it's deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere, so anything above the equator. So if we have a high here, it's going to come down to the equator. Okay, this zone right here, these are the northeast, I'm going to write NE, and then trade winds. Okay, in the southern hemisphere, they come in, but this time they're deflected to the left. Okay, these are the southeast trade winds. And you might be wondering, where did those names come from? Winds are named based on the direction from which they are flowing. So these trade winds are flowing from the northeast down to the southwest. Down here in the southern hemisphere, they're flowing from the southeast up to the northwest. So they're called the southeast trade winds and the northeast trade winds. They're named for where they're coming from. Okay, above that we have the, everybody just calls them the westerlies. But based on naming, these ones are going to be our southwesterlies. Okay, might help you remember where they're coming from. They go from the southwest up to the northeast. Okay, and then down here we have, they diverge. And these ones would be the north. I'll put it in parentheses for you. Westerlies. Okay. So, and then the last thing we have are polar easterlies. So they're coming from the east, but up by the poles, so northeast. And then we have um, polar easterlies. Okay, and then these ones are moving just like that. Okay, so the green shows our global wind belts. The blue shows our global pressure systems. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is a little bit of why they're named that. The trade winds are named because they are really good sources for trade. If you were to be trying to get a ship from one side of, let's say, the Atlantic Ocean um, to the other, you could hop into the trade winds and the winds are gonna help push your sails and you're going to go across the ocean. Problems would arise if you got stuck down in the doldrums. So the name comes from the fact that we don't have a lot of, you know, we don't have the strong pushing global winds down at the equator because the air is all converging together and it's rising. You're going to get clouds and precipitation, but not a lot of consistent wind that will just push your ship along. So these are called the doldrums because if your ship gets stuck here, you might be sitting for weeks until you kind of flow back into the big global wind belts or catch enough wind that you can move yourself back up into those and keep going. All right, now the horse latitudes. Um, this one I always found intriguing when I was young and learning about this. This is also a place you wouldn't want your ship to get caught because when you come here, the winds are coming down from above. It's nice, there's not a lot of storms. It'll be quite sunny, cloud, no clouds, um, but no consistent wind and it could be a problem. So when ships were moving from Europe to the New World, so in North America, 
uh, along these routes, if they got stuck in these horse latitudes right at 30 degrees north and they weren't getting a lot of wind, what they would start doing is they would take the horses that they had on board and they would start throwing them over. Um, that would reduce the amount of water that they had to give to the animals to conserve it for themselves because again, they don't have a lot of rainfall, but it would also possibly lighten the ship so maybe they could kind of catch an ocean current and get back into the wind and continue on the journey. Um, and they were carrying the horses that they were hoping to use uh, when they made landfall, but that was kind of a one way that they got it. Um, and maybe it's a way that will help you remember what's going on in the horse latitudes with why we don't have winds there or with our doldrums. So that again is the complicated, but maybe not so complicated now, look at our global wind uh, belts and pressure systems.